Intel is going to be investing billions of dollars in a pair of new plants for chips in Ohio. Our own John Ford joins us right now with a special guest. John. Becky, good morning and thanks. Joining us now, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger. Uh, Pat, welcome. And uh, we'll get to the stock impact and, and maybe some of even the political impact. But I have to start with the real world economic impact for Ohio here. And hey, the whole Midwest, this site is within a three hour drive. I was looking at this of Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and the borders of West Virginia, Michigan, Kentucky, and Indiana. There's never been a chip fab in this region. You're calling it Silicon Heartland. Uh, Why did you do it there? It would have been easy. I mean, impact is huge. It would have been easier to do it in California, Arizona, you know, Oregon, places where you've already got uh, fabs. Why there? Yeah, and obviously, uh, John, pleasure to join the show today. And, you know, from the company that helped create Silicon Valley, right, the Silicon Forest in Oregon, the Silicon Desert in Arizona, today, the Silicon Heartland. And we're quite excited. And, you know, we did a nationwide search for our next mega fab location. And, uh, you know, we looked at, uh, you know, 30 to 40 sites around the nation and on many factors, you know, big, you know, this is going to be uh, grow to, we hope, eight fabs over time. So a large location, energy, water, talent, you know, we have the uh, all of the Midwest schools. And this is manufacturing. You know, we wanted a place that had a, you know, history, a passion for manufacturing at scale. And uh, the state of Ohio, boy, I'm a Pennsylvania boy, but right next door, those Ohio, they were so enthusiastic, embraced us aggressively to really uh, demonstrate to us the extraordinary capacity that the Silicon Heartland has for our great nation. Well, now let's talk about where this fits into Intel's strategy. You and I have been talking about uh, what you're doing to try to catch up with your manufacturing process. You've got this strategy for foundry, uh, making chips for other companies. How dependent is this Ohio site and plan on things that we don't know yet? For example, we don't know when or really whether the CHIPS Act funding, that $52 billion is going to be available. We don't know when your next generation process technology is going to be ready exactly, though I know you said recently that's on track. Uh, And we don't know where the foundry business is going to be in 2025 when this is, uh, production is expected to come online. So how dependent is this Ohio plan on those things? Well, we need this capacity, period. And even if it's just for the Intel products, you know, we would be announcing this site today. You know, we we believe that there's uh, simply so much demand for our products. But when we uh, look at our foundry business, hmm, you know, we're going to run wafers for our products as well as our foundry customers at this location. So we need it for that reason as well. We also, as we said, with the CHIPS Act, we said, you know, we're going to build this site, period but it's going to be bigger and faster with the support of the CHIPS Act. And obviously, uh, today's announcement, and I'll be with the president this morning, is clearly a strong message to Congress that, you know, we're again putting our chips on the table. The say do <laughs> ratio is high. We need their support to go bigger and faster to restore this industry on American soil. Yeah, this is within a three-hour drive of six states, as I mentioned up front. So it's, a, it's an interesting political approach as well. Have you already reached out to uh, the leaders in those states that are nearby? And how do you communicate the follow-on economic impact of a chip fab versus even um, an an auto plant, which is what the region uh, is used to getting more excited about? Yeah, and, you know, as you think about this, you know, we're announcing it'll be 3,000 jobs for the first two fabs, but we hope to see it grow to be a full eight-plus fab site over the decade. You know, it's immediately building out 7,000 construction jobs. And for every one of our jobs, our typical ratios are greater than 10x of total jobs of suppliers, other ecosystems, teachers, you know, police officers, everything coming around, because this is building a small city, uh, as I describe it. So enormous economic impact for the entire region. And it tends to be a hub. And as we've seen in Oregon, Santa Clara, and Arizona, other companies come alongside as well. So it really becomes a bubbling cauldron of innovation and growth for the entire community. And obviously, I guess I'm going to have to be more enthusiastic for the Buckeyes, but also 
you know, the many other great engineering schools in the nation, you know, also military bases. We have huge uh, success with uh, military, you know, coming into a manufacturing environment. So, so many good things. And when we think about the auto industry, you know, you're going to see us have more to say with the auto industry leaders as they're uh, looking to us and others to build up and satisfy their demands. Because as we've seen, the economic impact of not having enough chips to meet uh, the growth of that has been inflationary, you know, has been job impacting. So this is critical to support that industry, which is already very present in the, in the heartland and now the Silicon heartland.